Sofia Masura. I am an associate professor at the Department of Psychology in Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. I am a cognitive experimental psychologist. My research area is uh, uh, the basic cognitive mechanisms, especially memory. I have done some research on working memory, and I basically investigate how working memory is connected with language and how working memory is helping us acquiring new vocabulary, especially in a second language. What is working memory? Working memory is our ability to hold in our minds important information over short periods of time while we're doing something difficult, something demanding. Working memory is a workspace, is a laboratory, is a cognitive system where information is held for very short periods of time, for a few seconds, and it is connected with other information that we already know. At the same time, while we're holding information in our working memory, we we'll process this information. We change the order of the information or we manipulate this information. It is a very important ability. And the best way to describe working memory is to give some examples uh, of when we use working memory. A very typical example of working memory is the cognitive system that we use when we do mental arithmetic. For example, if you can imagine doing um, multiplications mentally, imagine that you have to multiply 13 by 17, what you have to do is to hold the numbers in your mind while you are trying to do the manipulations and the multi multiplications. And at the same time, you try to remember some information from your long-term memory. For example, you try to remember the multiplication tables. This is the working memory system. This is the system that you are using while you are doing that. Another very typical example of working memory is uh, the activity, the mental activity we do when we are in a supermarket and they try to manipulate the information of the prices and to estimate how much we're going to pay at the checkout. A very typical example of working memory is what we do when we are tourists in a place that we don't know and we need some instructions, some information on how we can get somewhere. We, we ask, for example, where is the beach? and we get information that we have to keep going forward and then turn left and then turn right and, right and then see the roundabout and then see the church and then see the bits. This is a very lengthy piece of information. We might forget something and we have to hold this information while we're get at the bits and we are driving at the same time. This is the very important system, the working memory system that helps us do all of these very complex activities in our everyday lives. A very good way uh, to, to grasp working memory is to remember what we do when we have to remember a number without having a pen and a pencil to write it down, what we do when we have to remember um, a registration number, a PIN number, uh, what we have to do when we have to remember instructions to make a cake or to do something. This is the working memory system. This is something that we're using a lot every day in our everyday abilities. And it is very crucial and very important for several complex mental abilities we have. Working memory has some characteristics. For example, working memory is a limited system, limited in several ways. It is limited because the information can hold in working memory over very limited periods of time for a few seconds, as I said. Also, it is limited because the amount of information that can kept in working memory is very limited. We can remember a uh, few things at the same time. And it is also limited because the information 
uh, will be lost if we don't pay attention on the information that we hold in working memory. So sometimes working memory fails us. We, we don't manage to do something, especially when it is very complex, very complicated, and a very demanding mental task. Another characteristic of working memory is that differs from person to person. There are huge individual differences. Of course, it increases as we develop. The adults have a larger working memory capacity than children, but uh, within the normal, um, Rains, we, we differ a lot. Some of us have better working memory, some of us have worse working memory. And the people and the, the children and the students and the pupils who have very good working memory, it seems that, that they manage better in learning and in activities in school and in acquiring new vocabulary and in learning a second language. <laughs> working memory is linked to bilingualism? This is a very important question. Um, bilingualism, it is very well connected with, with mental abilities. Although for several years we used to think that bilingualism is something bad for cognition, we had data showing that bilingual individuals had lower scores on uh, intelligence tests. We had uh, evidence showing that bilingual individuals scoring lower on vocabulary tasks in both of their languages or in many languages. So we thought that bilingualism is something bad for cognition. Now we have changed our attitudes and we have changed our attitudes because we have learned a lot about bilingualism. The research in bilingualism, the published studies in bilingualism, are very, very many and are increasing every year. So now we know more and we come to a conclusion that actually bilingualism is something very good for cognition. It is good anyway, it is very beneficial thing to be a bilingual in several ways, but especially for cognition. We know that bilingualism affects positively mental abilities and cognition and executive functions. We know that bilingualism is a very good thing, not only for language and for executive functions, but for the brain and for the mind. And we talk about the bilingualism advantage, that bilinguals are better on several cognitive tasks and outperform their monolingual peers. We know that the two languages are active all the time and they compete each other. We know that as the, the second language um, uh, changes, that affects also the first language. And it is a very um, complex thing for brain and uh, mental activities. That's, uh, we know that it is a very good thing for cognition and for several cognitive activities. This is also a very important question question, if bilinguals differ from monolinguals on their working memory capacity. It is a very important question because we don't have a very definite answer. There are some studies that show that indeed bilinguals are better on working memory tasks when they are compared with monolinguals, but there are several studies, several researchers that they fail to find this observation, that they don't see any uh, advantage on working memory for bilinguals. Actually, this is something good. When we have a conflict on, on research and on science, it is a good thing because that's a starting point to do more research and try to find out why this bilingual and fun that sometimes appears on working memory and sometimes does not appear. What makes some bilinguals having better working memory than others? So this is a debate. We don't have conclusive evidence yet about advantage on working memory for bilinguals, but it is a good thing that we debate to each other about what exactly happens. 
this is also a very good question. Why we don't have conclusive evidence? Why some people fight them but it's on working memory and some others they don't? I have several answers to that and I have several suggestions. One reason we don't come into a conclusion about that is because when we compare bilinguals and monolinguals, the monolinguals we are using to compare to uh, our bilingual groups are not exactly monolinguals. They are very rare to find people who don't speak any second language. They have been exposed, they might know a bit, so they're not pure monolinguals. So when we compare, we don't compare exactly bilinguals and monolinguals. Of course, also our bilingual groups are not homogeneous and they're different bilinguals at different stages with different balance between their two languages. Some of bilinguals are multilinguals and they speak more than two languages. So this difference between uh, our groups when we're doing research creates this conflict on evidence. Another reason for the inconsistent um, data on our research comes from the tasks we are using. Working memory is a very important ability. We have several models about working memory. We have several ideas on how exactly it works. And of course, we have different ideas on how exactly we can assess and how we can estimate working memory. So different researchers and different labs use different tasks to assess working memory. And this is one reason we don't come to conclusive evidence because we don't uh, estimate working memory with exactly the same tasks all the time. Of course, another reason for this inconsistent data is the language we use to estimate working memory. Even when we use exactly the same tasks to assess working memory among monolinguals and multilinguals and bilinguals, we use uh, a different language. So if you assess the working memory of a person on their dominant language, they might score higher uh, than another person who this language that you're using to assess has this as not a very dominant language. It is better when we use non-verbal tasks and it is better when we estimate working memory uh, without verbal tasks that might create this inconsistency. There is another final reason why we have this debate on working memory and bilingualism and products. And that reason is something that we call publication bias. But publication bias means that it is easier to publish a study when you have found an effect, and it's more difficult to publish a study when you don't have found an effect. So it is possible that we have seen published more research with evidence about the differences between bilinguals and monolinguals on their working memory capacity, and there are fewer studies with no effect at all. Yes, actually working memory can be improved. Working memory is a flexible system, is a system that changes during our lives, becomes better and becomes worse when we're very old, but it is rather flexible. This is very good news for us because that means that we can enhance working memory, we can improve our working memory. We're trying to find interve interventions that improve working memory. And this is the reason why initially we thought that working memory might be better among bilinguals because bilinguals using their working memory a lot. They have to process and store information from two languages. They have to acquire several phonemes and different sounds of the language. And this is something like a natural exercise. This is something like a gene for working memory. That's why we were expecting their working memory to become better because, it's, because it is something that changes and uh, using two languages is something that can actually change and improve and enhance working memory. This is good and this is important, although we don't have always this effect on working memory, but we know that it can change. 
Another thing that I would like to say about improvement of working memory is that even when we will not manage to change working memory and improve working memory, there are several things that we can do to use working memory in a better way. We can use strategies and we can use this very limited space, this very limited storage in our minds in a better way in order to have better um, performance on mental activities. Another way that we can improve working memory is if we are aware of what working memory does and what puts lots of load on working memory. So if we have students or pupils with poor working memory, what we can do is to assess their working memory, to be aware of their problem. It's not exactly a problem, but sometimes teachers think that um, children don't pay attention, but actually it's not a matter of attention. They cannot keep information for a very long time in their working memory. They lose this information, so they might fall behind in what they have to do. A good way is to be aware of that and try to not load working memory a lot. Um, monitoring the children and trying to uh, reduce the information for working memory. It is a very good way to improve the performance of working memory. For example, if um, instructions are very lengthy and if you have to say too many things to a child, you can use small steps and cut this information down. Do you remember the example with the tourist who had to follow on the instructions uh, until reaching the beach? If you ask three or four people while you are driving, of course you can remember because you have small pieces of information to hold in working memory and then you will succeed on finding the place you want to go. And actually we see that a lot when children have to do demanding things in school. For example, if they have to copy a sentence from the whiteboard and at the same time they have to think about the spelling, they have to remember the sentence, they might fail because they, they don't manage to keep this information on their working memory. So one step at a time, monitoring and helping and using memory aids is a very good way, it's a very good strategy to improve working memory performance. Mm -hmm.